my name is Cody Brown. I work at Thought Cafe and I do some of the animations for Crash Course. Today we're going to be importing a character from Illustrator, giving him a simple rig, and then putting him into a scene. We'll drop him into the shot where he does this big squishy bounce and then gives us a little wave. This is the Gilgamesh character and a background from episode 16 of the Mythology series, which I've been told is going to be made available for download. So this is one I've previously done and what we'll be trying to copy. So if I double click into this, we can see the character's composition. And this is what it looks like in, inside his composition. Command A to select all the layers and U to open up to see those keyframes. We'll be making something looks pretty similar to this. It'll end up a little bit different, but it should end up looking pretty close to what I have here. Going back to our main composition, we could delete this, but I think we'll just uh, duplicate the composition instead, uh, in case you want to go back and see that version. And then we can delete those comps, and to bring in a new character, I'll go up to the folder, and Command-I is the shortcut to import. I look for the Gilgamesh character and change import as from footage to composition retain layer sizes, and click OK. We'll drag him out onto our scene, change the label color, and scale him down to something that looks right. I'll type in 50 for scale to give us a round number. Then I'm going to set a position keyframe for where he's at now. Shift that six frames down the timeline and move our character up through the top of the frame so he falls down into the shot. I'm going to move that second keyframe over a couple spots to the right so the fall takes a little longer. Uh, clicking back into him, first thing we're going to do is give him a very simple rig. And to start the rig I like to change the label colors to help separate the layers. Uh, the body and things attached to the body are purple, arms orange, legs blue, and everything attached to the head is a shade of green. This just makes it easier to pick out certain layers, helps to group things visually, and I think it could be pretty useful, uh, especially when it's a longer or more complicated scene. After that, I'm going to start parenting layers, which is just attaching things together. Cloth, arms, head attached to the body, hair and facial details attached to the head. Uh, once that's done, I'll move some anchor points and add the puppet pins. I'll select the arm and leg layers and solo those with the circle icon. Y is the shortcut for the pan behind tool, which will let you move the anchor point, and for the arm, I'm going to move that to the shoulder. And then Command P will bring up the puppet pins, and I'm going to put one in the shoulder, one at the elbow, and one in the hand. And it's very similar for the leg. We're going to move the anchor point to the top of the thigh, and add pins to the thigh, knee, and foot. Once that's done, I'm going to select the cloth and the hair and move all of those anchor points to the top of their layers. So when we adjust the scaling later, it'll scale from the top and not the middle of the layer. And that's actually going to do it for the rig. It's a very simple rig. Uh, it could be a lot more complicated, but for what we're doing, I, I think that's plenty. To start us out, I'm going to pick a neutral pose for the character. Uh, just putting his hands on his hips, I think that looks okay. Uh, so after he lands, he's going to go into this pose, and after he's done waving, he'll go back to this pose. I'm also going to put a guide below his feet, so we know where the ground is. On the body, I'll set a position keyframe for when he lands. A few frames later, he's going to go down to absorb the impact from the fall. He's going to shoot up past his neutral position and then a little too far back down before he settles. I'm going to do almost the same thing for the head. Uh, so we'll set two keyframes for the regular position. 
right after the impact is when it's pulled down. Uh, then he's going to go too far back up, uh, then a little too far back down before he stops. You may have noticed all my keyframes so far are easy ease keyframes, uh, which means we're easing into and out of all our positions. But I've changed the hit frame to a regular keyframe, so when he hits the ground, it happens all of a sudden and uh, with more impact. Moving on to the legs. Uh, we'll copy over our neutral keyframes. Uh, next, I'm going to lift his feet up in the air for when he's falling down. And then, right before he lands, we'll have him stretch out to reach the ground. I'm going to leave one foot uh, just a little bit above our guide until the frame after he lands, uh, just so both feet don't hit the ground at the same time. Once he hits the ground, we'll bend his legs to absorb the impact. Uh, after that, we'll have his knees too high, uh, so his legs are stretching out. And then a little too far down as he settles. Uh, let's see how that looks. Okay. I think that'll do for the legs. The next part we're going to do is the cloth. So we're going to set a keyframe for its regular size. Uh, it's going to be coming up as he gets closer to the ground. Uh, then once he hits, it's going to be shooting down. Uh, and then coming too far back up, too far down, and actually, we're going to do this in extra time for the cloth and for the hair, so it has a little bit more wiggle, or more subtle time than the rest of the layers. Right now, the skirt goes through the floor, but we'll be fixing that in the next step by adding an effect called Distort Mesh. I just copied those scale keyframes over to the back cloth, the back hair and the front hair. So it looks okay for the back cloth and the back hair, but it, it really breaks the front hair. So we're really going to tone that down so we don't break anything and keep his beard looking like a beard. But we still want to keep our bounce. No, I think that looks okay. Next, I'm going to close his eyes for impact. So when he hits the ground, he closes his eyes, and when he comes back up, he opens them up. And then as he's settling, we'll add in a blink. So I just go down to 22% for a blink. Uh, if you go down to zero, his eyes disappear, and we don't want that. So I think 22% is a good amount. And that's over six frames, so three frames down, three frames up. And then here's our distort mesh so our skirt doesn't break the floor plane. I changed it to one row, one column because that's all we need for our purposes here. So we'll drag the bottom of those boxes just above our marker so that it looks like the fabric's splaying it onto the ground. And we're going to do the same thing for the back cloak. So we'll copy over those keyframes. But it doesn't quite look right, so we'll change that up a bit so it matches a little bit better. I want to keep it inside the front skirt layer. All right, I, yeah, I think that looks OK. OK, so the next part's going to be the arms. I'll set a rotation keyframe and then move back a few frames. 
I'm going to have his arms start up in the air, and then as he lands, we'll have them shoot down past his waist and then land back on his hips. But our composition is a little too small. Uh, if his arms go outside the composition, they're just going to get clipped off in our main composition. Uh, so we just make the comp size a little bit larger so that he fits in the box. However, that is going to shift our character out in the main composition. So when we go back out to that, we'll have to adjust his position just, uh, just a little bit. So his arms start out up high. Then we'll copy his ending keyframes down, and we're going to change those so his arms shoot down as soon as he lands. So they're going to go right from up in the air to down by his waist. Then he's going to put his hands and elbows up a little too far before he puts his hands back on his hips. I'm going to do the same thing for both arms. Going back to our main composition, uh, the next thing we're going to do is add a shadow. So it's just a black ellipse with a Gaussian blur to soften it up a little bit. Put it below our Gilgamesh layer, we'll label it shadow. Position it how we'd like resize it so it looks about the proper size. Change the opacity down to 22 or whatever looks right. He's a little bit low in the frame so I'm going to move him up a little bit. Change the shadow to match. Just keep fiddling until it looks right. I'm going to set up a scale and opacity keyframe for when he lands. When he's in the air, I'm going to scale it up a bit, turn the opacity all the way down, so it scales down and it shows up as it gets closer to the ground. And that's pretty much going to do it for the drop-in and the bounce, uh, so now we can move on to the wave. I did some keyframes for the arms right as things settle, uh, and then I've gone forward and taken his hands off his hips and rotated his body slightly. I had a little rotation to the body, just to offset for his arm being in the air. Now we're just going to find a good wave pose and uh, a good second wave pose. And we can copy those over a few times, so he'll go back and forth between the two wave poses. And then we just have to decide how many times he's going to repeat that. Okay, I think that's a good number of times to wave. Then I'm going to add a rotation keyframe to his arm at the end and at the start of the wave, so he'll be rotating his arm slightly down the whole time he's waving. I'm going to add these subtle rotations to the body, the head, and his other arm as well. Before he puts his hand back on his waist, I'm going to move his arm in the opposite direction. That's a little anticipation for the move. And he's going to overshoot that move slightly, so his hand will go too far before returning back to its neutral position. I'm going to apply that same thinking to his other arm, his head, and his body. So now I'm going to do that little bit of movement on his other arm. He's going to go just a little too far in before he settles. And 
and then for the head, it's just going to pretty much oppose the body. It's almost the opposite of the body rotation, so we'll just be trying to keep his head straight pretty much. A lot of blink because he's going up. A blink during the wave. A blink on the way back down. And uh, one more blink to kind of end our animation. So we can jump back into our main composition to see how this is looking. Okay. Yeah, it's coming along pretty well. Getting pretty, pretty close to finishing things up. Okay, so one of the last things we're going to do is start offsetting some keyframes so everything isn't happening at the same time. I'm going to set the elbow off one frame, the hand off uh, two frames, uh, the cloth and the mesh will be a frame delayed, so they're catching up to the main movement. Uh, the head is also going to be offset by a frame, so it's catching up to the, the body movement. And then I'm going to try delaying the head rotation by another frame, Let's see what it looks like uh, when it's a frame earlier than a position move. I don't like either of them, so I'm going to put it back. The arm's looking a little bit weird on the way back down, uh, so I'm going to take that delay off, and hopefully it looks a little bit better, and uh, I think it does. Moving back into our main composition, the next thing we're going to do is add a light to the top of our character to try and separate him from the background a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate that composition twice, delete the keyframes, attach it to the original layer, I'll set the track mat to alpha inverted, so it'll hide our top layer and only appear where our top layer isn't. Change the middle layer's blending mode to add so it's bright. I'm going to move that top layer down a little bit, put a little blur on the top layer to soften things up, and I'll turn down the opacity on the middle layer so that light isn't so bright. Then I'm just going to adjust the shadow a little bit. I'm just scaling it up a little bit when he squashes down, And then I'm putting it back to normal when he comes back up. And I think that's going to do it. Uh, it looks pretty similar to what we were going for. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.